I took a deep breath, savoring the crisp morning air as I stepped out of my apartment. Everything was in its rightful place, meticulously organized to maintain the perfect harmony I craved. My briefcase was neatly packed, my outfit pressed to perfection, and not a single hair out of place. Order and control, that's what kept me grounded. As I made my way to the annual charity gala, I couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement. These events were more than just an opportunity to give back. They were a chance to connect with like-minded individuals who valued structure and purpose as much as I did. The moment I stepped into the grand ballroom, I was greeted by a sea of familiar faces, all dressed to impress. My gaze was immediately drawn to a tall, well-groomed man across the room. Our eyes met, and I felt an instant connection, as if he too understood the importance of maintaining order amidst the chaos of life. "'Excuse me,' he said, approaching me with a warm smile. "'I couldn't help but notice your poise and elegance. I'm Ben Hudson.' "'Laney Watson,' I replied, returning his smile. "'It's a pleasure to meet you.' We struck up a conversation, effortlessly flowing from topic to topic. Ben was a project manager at a prestigious firm, and his dedication to his work mirrored my own. We shared a passion for community service and a belief that even the smallest acts of kindness could make a profound difference. As the evening progressed, our connection deepened. Ben's charm and attentiveness captivated me, and I found myself drawn to his calm demeanor and unwavering focus. When he invited me to a family gathering the following weekend, I didn't hesitate to accept. Little did I know that this seemingly perfect encounter would be the catalyst for a whirlwind of events that would test the very foundations of my carefully curated life. The next Saturday, I arrived at Ben's sister's house, my heart fluttering with anticipation. As the door swung open, chaos erupted in the form of three rambunctious children, their giggles and shrieks piercing the once tranquil atmosphere. Ben's sister, Jill, greeted me with a harried smile, her hair disheveled and her clothes in disarray. I'm so sorry about the mess, she apologized, ushering me inside. The kids have been on a tear all day. I nodded politely, trying to maintain my composure as the children zipped past, trailing toys and crumbs in their wake. Ben emerged from the kitchen, his face betraying a hint of exhaustion. Laney, I'm glad you could make it,' he said, planting a gentle kiss on my cheek. "'Let me give you a tour of the house.' As we navigated through the chaos, I couldn't help but feel a growing sense of unease. The clutter and disarray grated against my very nature, and I found myself struggling to maintain my usual poise. Later that evening, as Ben and I sat on the rooftop garden overlooking the city, he took my hand in his. "'Laney, I know we've only known each other for a short time,' but I feel a connection with you that I've never experienced before. He reached into his pocket and produced a small velvet box, opening it to reveal a stunning diamond ring. Will you marry me and bring order to my life? In that moment, I felt a surge of hope and excitement. Perhaps this was the key to finding the balance and tranquility I so desperately craved. I gazed into Ben's eyes, seeing the promise of a future filled with structure and stability. Yes, I whispered, allowing him to slip the ring onto my finger. I'll marry you. Little did I know that this decision would set in motion a series of events that would shatter my illusions of a perfectly ordered life, testing the limits of my resilience and determination. Moving into our new house should have been an exciting milestone, but it quickly became a source of tension between Ben and me. As I unpacked box after box, meticulously arranging every item in its designated space, Ben lounged on the couch, oblivious to the chaos surrounding us. Ben, don't you think you should help with the unpacking? I asked, trying to keep my frustration in check. He waved his hand dismissively. Relax, babe. We've got all the time in the world. I bit my tongue, reminding myself that this was just a temporary setback. Once we settled in, surely Ben would appreciate the importance of maintaining order in our home. But the weeks passed, and Ben's neglect only grew more apparent. He would leave his clothes strewn about, dishes piled in the sink and clutter accumulating in every corner. My pleas for him to pitch in fell on deaf ears, and the tension between us mounted. To make matters worse, I was struggling with a personal battle of my own, infertility. Month after month, the negative pregnancy tests chipped away at my confidence, leaving me feeling inadequate and incomplete. It's going to be okay, Laney, 
the doctor reassured me during one of our appointments. These things take time. But deep down, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was missing. A void that no amount of organization could fill. Then, Jill and her kids started dropping by unannounced, their chaotic presence disrupting the fragile balance I had fought so hard to maintain. Within minutes of their arrival, the house would transform into a war zone, toys scattered everywhere, and the shrill cries of the children piercing the air. Jill, can't you control your kids? I snapped one day, my patience wearing thin. She fixed me with a cold stare. They're just being kids, Laney. Lighten up. Ben, ever the peacekeeper, sided with his sister. Come on, Laney. They're not hurting anyone. I wanted to scream, to make them understand the turmoil their disregard for order was causing me. But instead, I bottled it up, retreating to my meticulously arranged bedroom for solace. The tipping point came when Jill dropped her kids off for an entire day without warning. Ben had already left for work, leaving me to fend for myself against the onslaught of chaos. Aunt Laney, we're hungry. Max whined, tugging at my sleeve. Hold on, I'll make you something, I said, trying to maintain my composure. But as I turned to head to the kitchen, a crash echoed from the living room. My heart sank as I rushed in to find my prized porcelain figurine collection shattered on the floor, the remnants scattered among the toys and debris. Tears stung my eyes as I surveyed the destruction. This was the final straw. When Ben returned home, I confronted him and Jill, my voice trembling with barely contained rage. "'Look what your kids did!' I shouted, gesturing to the shattered figurines. Jill scoffed. "'It was just an accident, Laney. Get over it!' Ben stepped between us, his expression apologetic. Laney, you're overreacting. They're just kids. In that moment, I realized that no matter how hard I tried, Ben would never truly understand the importance of order and stability to me. His loyalty to his sister and her chaotic brood would always come first. As I stared at the shattered pieces on the floor, a part of me shattered too. The illusion of the perfect life I had envisioned with Ben. The aftermath of the porcelain figurine incident was like a dark cloud looming over our household. Ben tried to smooth things over, but the rift between us had grown too wide. Laney, it was just an accident, he pleaded. You know Jill didn't mean for that to happen. I shook my head, my jaw clenched. That's not the point, Ben. Your sister and her kids have no respect for our home or our boundaries. He sighed, running a hand through his hair. I'll talk to her, okay? It won't happen again. But his empty promises did little to reassure me. I knew deep down that Jill's chaos would continue to infiltrate our lives, and Ben would do nothing to stop it. Sure enough, a few weeks later, Jill showed up at our doorstep with her kids in tow, a frazzled look on her face. Ben, I need you to watch the kids for a few hours, she said, ushering them inside before either of us could protest. I shot Ben a look, but he just shrugged helplessly. It's only for a couple of hours, Laney. We can handle it. Famous last words. Within minutes, the house was in disarray. Max and Tommy were engaged in a fierce battle with Nerf guns, launching foam darts in every direction. Lily, the youngest, was smearing peanut butter and jelly all over the couch, giggling gleefully. That's it! I snapped, my patience reaching its limit. Jill, you need to get your kids under control or leave! Jill whirled around, her eyes narrowing. Excuse me, they're just having fun, Laney. You need to loosen up. Ben, ever the mediator, tried to calm the situation. Ladies, let's not fight, Jill. Maybe it's best if you take the kids home for now. But Jill wasn't having it. She planted her hands on her hips defiantly. No way, Ben. You said you'd watch them, and that's what you're going to do. I could feel my blood boiling as I watched Ben shrink under his sister's glare. He was supposed to be my partner, my rock, but instead he was letting Jill walk all over us. Fine, I spat, grabbing my purse. If you're not going to stand up to her, then I'm leaving. As I stormed out the door, I could hear Ben calling after me, but I didn't stop. I needed to get away from the chaos, even if just for a little while. I ended up at Hannah's place, my best friend since college. She took one look at my face and ushered me inside. Laney, what happened? she asked, concern etched on her features. I told her everything, the constant disrespect from Jill, the destruction in our home, and Ben's unwillingness to stand up for me. Hannah shook her head in disbelief. That's not right, Laney. You shouldn't have to put up with that kind of treatment in your own home. Her words resonated with me, 
validating the frustration I had been bottling up for months. I was so caught up in trying to maintain order that I had lost sight of what truly mattered, being respected and supported by my partner. When I returned home later that evening, Ben was waiting for me in the living room, the chaos miraculously contained. Laney, we need to talk, he said, his expression grave. I braced myself, sensing that whatever he was about to say would change the course of our lives forever. Jill and the kids, they're going to be staying with us for a while. The words hit me like a slap in the face. I opened my mouth to protest, but Ben held up his hand. I know, I know, but Jill's going through a tough time right now, and she needs our support. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. After everything Jill had put us through, Ben was inviting more chaos into our lives and expecting me to just accept it. No, I said firmly, my voice trembling with barely contained fury. Absolutely not. Ben's eyes widened in surprise. Laney, come on, they're family. And what about me, Ben? I shot back. Don't I count as family, too? He fell silent, unable to meet my gaze. In that moment, I realized that no matter how much I loved him, Ben would never truly prioritize my needs over his sister's. The illusion of the perfect life I had envisioned for us had well and truly shattered. The tension in the air was thick enough to cut with a knife. Ben's announcement about Jill and her kids moving in had pushed me to my breaking point. This is unacceptable, Ben, I said, my voice trembling with barely contained rage. I will not subject myself to that kind of chaos and disrespect in my own home. Ben's eyes widened in disbelief. Laney, come on, they're family. We have to help them out. At what cost? I shot back. Your sister has shown zero regard for our boundaries or our sanity, and you just enable her behavior by letting her walk all over us. Jill, who had been hovering nearby, scoffed loudly. Wow, Laney, way to be a team player. I whirled on her, my patience completely shattered. Don't you dare talk to me about being a team player, Jill. You and your kids have done nothing but wreak havoc in our lives. Ben stepped between us, his hands raised in a placating gesture. Ladies, please, let's not fight. Jill, why don't you take the kids to the other room for a bit? Jill shot me a venomous glare but complied, hurting her children out of the room. As soon as she was gone, I turned to Ben, my heart pounding with a mixture of anger and determination. I can't do this anymore, Ben, I said, my voice trembling. You've made it clear that your loyalty lies with your sister, no matter how much chaos she brings into our lives. Ben's eyes widened in panic. Laney, no. That's not true. You're my wife and I love you. I shook my head, feeling a strange sense of clarity wash over me. If that were true, you would have stood up for me. You would have put your foot down and told Jill that enough was enough. He opened his mouth to protest, but I held up a hand, cutting him off. I've tried so hard to make this work, Ben. I've compromised and sacrificed all in the hopes of finding some semblance of peace and order. But it's clear that's never going to happen as long as Jill and her kids are in the picture. With a heavy heart, I turned and headed towards the bedroom, grabbing a suitcase from the closet and beginning to pack my belongings. Ben followed me, his eyes wide with panic. Laney, what are you doing? I'm leaving, Ben, I said, my voice steady despite the turmoil raging within me. I can't live like this anymore. He grabbed my arm, desperation etched on his face. Please, Laney, don't do this. We can work it out, I promise. I gently pried his hand off, shaking my head. You've had countless chances to make things right, Ben, but you've chosen Jill and her chaos over me, time and time again. As I finished packing my suitcase, I felt a strange sense of relief wash over me. For too long I had been suffocating under the weight of chaos and disrespect, desperately clinging to the illusion of the perfect life I had envisioned. But now that illusion had shattered, and I was finally free. I called Hannah my voice steady despite the tears that threatened to spill over. Hey, it's me. Can I stay with you for a bit? Once she had agreed, I turned to Ben, who was watching me with a devastated expression. I'll be staying with Hannah for now, I said, my tone firm. And I'll be hiring a moving company to come and collect the rest of my belongings, the ones I paid for. Ben's eyes widened in shock. Laney, please don't do this. We can work it out, I swear. But I had made up my mind— the illusion of the perfect life had shattered, and it was time for me to move on. Goodbye, Ben, I said, my voice heavy with finality. I hope you and Jill are happy together. 
With those words, I turned and walked out the door, leaving behind the chaos and heartbreak that had once threatened to consume me. A new chapter was beginning, and this time I was in control. The weight that had been crushing me for so long finally lifted as I stepped into my new apartment. It was smaller than the house I had shared with Ben, but it felt like a sanctuary, a place where I could breathe freely without the constant threat of chaos looming. Hannah had been an absolute rock throughout the entire ordeal, offering her unwavering support and a listening ear whenever I needed it. I'm so proud of you, Lainey, she said as we unpacked the last of my boxes. It took a lot of courage to walk away from that toxic situation. I smiled, feeling a sense of peace wash over me. Thanks, Han. I couldn't have done it without you. Over the next few weeks, I focused on rebuilding my life and rediscovering the parts of myself that had been lost in the chaos of my marriage. I threw myself into my work, finding solace in the structure and order of my auditing job. My colleagues noticed the change in me almost immediately. You seem different, Lainey. Lisa, a close friend from the office, remarked one day. More confident, somehow. I nodded, a small smile tugging at my lips. I finally got rid of the baggage that was weighing me down. As I thrived in my newfound freedom, Ben's life seemed to be spiraling in the opposite direction. Jill's presence in his home had only amplified the chaos, and his work began to suffer as a result. Ben, we need to talk, his boss said, summoning him into his office one day. Your performance has been slipping lately, and it's starting to affect the entire team. Ben ran a hand through his hair, his expression weary. I know, sir. It's been a rough few months at home, and it's been hard to focus. His boss shook his head, his expression stern. I understand that personal issues can be difficult, but they can't be allowed to interfere with your work. If this continues, I'll have no choice but to let you go. Ben nodded, his shoulders slumped in defeat. I understand. I'll get it together, I promise. But no matter how hard he tried, the chaos at home only seemed to intensify. Jill's kids were constantly breaking things, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. And Jill, herself, did little to rein them in, content to let Ben shoulder the burden of cleaning up their messes. One particularly bad incident occurred when Ben was running late for work. He had just stepped out of the shower when he heard a crash from the living room, followed by Lily's shrill cries. Rushing out, he found his prized collection of antique vases shattered on the floor, the remnants scattered among the toys and debris that seemed to litter every surface. What happened, he demanded, his heart sinking at the sight of the destruction. Jill, who had been lounging on the couch, barely looked up from her phone. The kids were playing, and they knocked over one of your ugly vases. No big deal. Ben's jaw clenched, a wave of anger washing over him. This was the final straw. Get out, he said, his voice trembling with barely contained fury. Jill's head snapped up, her eyes widening in surprise. Excuse me? You heard me, Ben said, his hands bawling into fists at his sides. Get your kids and get out of my house. I can't take this chaos anymore. For a moment, Jill looked like she might protest. But then, something in Ben's expression must have given her pause. She gathered her kids and their belongings, shooting Ben a venomous glare as she stormed out the door. As the door slammed shut behind her, Ben sank to the floor, surrounded by the shattered remnants of his once prized collection. It was a harsh reminder of the price he had paid for enabling Jill's chaos. A price that had cost him his marriage, his sanity, and now his most cherished possessions. As I settled into my new life, thriving in the peace and order I had fought so hard to reclaim, I couldn't help but feel a twinge of satisfaction. The universe had a way of balancing things out and it seemed that karma had finally caught up with Ben and Jill. Little did I know, however, that the true reckoning was still to come. The months following my departure from Ben's life were some of the most peaceful and fulfilling I had experienced in years. I threw myself into my work, relishing the structure and order that had been sorely lacking in my marriage. My boss took notice of my renewed dedication and focus, rewarding me with a prestigious promotion that came with a significant pay raise. For the first time in a long while, I felt truly appreciated and valued for my contributions. Congratulations, Lainey, Lisa said, giving me a warm hug. You've worked so hard for this. You deserve it. I smiled, feeling a surge of pride and accomplishment. 
This was the life I had always envisioned for myself, one of stability, success, and most importantly, peace. Little did I know, however, that the calm before the storm was about to come to an abrupt end. It was a crisp autumn evening when my phone rang, the caller ID displaying a number I hadn't seen in months, Ben's. My heart skipped a beat as I debated whether or not to answer. Against my better judgment, I picked up. Hello? Laney, Ben's voice crackled through the line, laced with desperation. It's me. I, I need your help. I steeled myself, determined not to let his pleas sway me. What do you want, Ben? There was a pause, as if he was struggling to find the words. I made a mistake, Laney. A huge mistake. Jill and her kids, they've ruined my life. I couldn't help but feel a twinge of satisfaction at the admission. After all, hadn't I warned him time and time again about the chaos they would bring? I lost my job, he continued, his voice thick with emotion, and then Jill left, taking the kids with her, but not before they destroyed almost everything I owned. I could picture the scene vividly. Ben, surrounded by the wreckage of his once pristine home, a victim of his own choices. I'm sorry, Ben, I said, my voice surprisingly steady, but this is the bed you made for yourself. You chose Jill and her chaos over me, time and time again. I know, he said, the words tumbling out in a rush. And I was wrong, so, so wrong. Laney, I'm begging you, please, come back, give me another chance. I felt a flicker of pity for the man I had once loved, now reduced to such a pitiful state. But it wasn't enough to sway me. I can't, Ben, I said firmly. Too much has happened. I've built a life for myself, a peaceful, orderly life, free from the chaos that nearly consumed me. There was a long silence on the other end of the line, punctuated only by the sound of Ben's ragged breathing. I understand, he finally said, his voice heavy with defeat. I just... I wanted you to know that I'm sorry, for everything. With that, the line went dead, and I was left staring at my phone, a strange mixture of emotions swirling within me. In the days that followed, I couldn't help but feel a sense of closure. Ben had finally faced the consequences of his actions, and while a part of me still cared for him, I knew that returning to that life would only lead me down a path of misery once more. As for me, my life continued on an upward trajectory. My hard work and dedication paid off in spades, earning me a coveted spot in a prestigious certification program that would open even more doors for my career. On the day of my first class, I stood before my new classmates, a sense of pride and accomplishment welling up within me. Hello, everyone, I began, my voice confident and steady. My name is Lainey Watson, and I'm here to... As I spoke, I couldn't help but marvel at how far I had come, from a woman trapped in a cyclone of chaos to a strong, independent force to be reckoned with. The illusions of my past life had been shattered, but in their place a new reality had taken shape, one in which I was the master of my own destiny. And as I looked out at the eager faces before me, I knew that this was only the beginning of a journey that would take me to heights I had never dreamed possible. The weeks following Ben's desperate plea were a whirlwind of activity and growth. Not only had I successfully completed the prestigious certification program, but I had also caught the attention of a former colleague, Chris Turner. Laney, it's been too long, he said when we met for coffee one afternoon. I've been keeping tabs on your career, and I have to say, I'm impressed. I couldn't help but feel a swell of pride at his words. Chris had been a mentor of sorts to me early in my career, and his approval meant a great deal. Thank you, Chris, I replied, taking a sip of my coffee. It hasn't been an easy road, but I'm finally in a place where I can truly thrive. He nodded, a knowing smile playing on his lips. I've heard whispers about your personal life, too, about how you had the strength to walk away from a toxic situation. I tensed slightly, not expecting him to bring up my failed marriage, but Chris quickly put me at ease. Don't worry, I'm not here to pry, he said, holding up a hand. I just wanted to say that I admire your resilience. Not many people would have had the courage to do what you did. I felt a rush of gratitude for his understanding, and for the first time in a long while, I didn't feel the need to shy away from the subject of my past. It wasn't easy, I admitted, but I knew that if I didn't walk away, the chaos would have consumed me entirely. Chris nodded sagely. Well, I'm glad you found the strength to break free, and that's actually why I wanted to meet with you today. He leaned forward, his expression turning serious. 
Lainey, I have an opportunity for you. A chance to take your career to the next level while also finding the fulfillment and purpose you've been searching for. I felt my heart rate quit with anticipation. I'm listening. Chris went on to explain that he had recently taken a leadership role at a nonprofit organization dedicated to empowering women and helping them break free from toxic situations. And he wanted me to come on board as his right hand woman, spearheading initiatives and mentoring others who found themselves in similar circumstances to the one I had escaped. It was an opportunity that spoke to me on a deep level. Not only would I be able to continue growing my career, but I would also have the chance to use my experiences to help others find the strength and resilience they needed to take control of their lives. Without hesitation, I accepted Chris's offer. The following Monday, I strode into the nonprofit's sleek office, a sense of purpose and determination propelling me forward. As I made my way to the conference room for our first team meeting, I couldn't help but feel a surge of pride and accomplishment. I had come so far from the woman I once was, the one who had allowed chaos and disrespect to dictate her life. Now I was a beacon of strength and resilience, ready to inspire and empower others to break free from their own shackles. As I stepped up to the podium and looked out at the eager faces of my new team, I felt a sense of clarity wash over me. Good morning, everyone, I began, my voice confident and assured. My name is Lainey Watson, and I'm here to share with you the story of how I shattered the illusions that were holding me back and how you can do the same. As I spoke, weaving the tale of my journey from chaos to clarity, I couldn't help but steal a glance out the window. And there, in the distance, I caught a glimpse of a familiar figure. Ben, disheveled and defeated, watching from afar as I commanded the room with a poise and confidence he had never seen in me before. In that moment, I knew that the tables had truly turned. The power dynamics that had once ruled our relationship had been flipped on their heads, and I was the one in control now. It was a bittersweet realization, but one that filled me with a sense of pride and accomplishment. I had come full circle, emerging from the wreckage of my past, like a phoenix rising from the ashes, stronger and more resilient than ever before. And as I continued to share my story, inspiring others to find their own strength and courage, I knew that this was just the beginning of a new chapter, one in which I would never again allow chaos or disrespect to dictate the course of my life. The months that followed my new career with Chris's uh, organization were a whirlwind of growth and empowerment, both personally and professionally. With my newfound confidence and clarity of purpose, I was able to embrace my passion for helping others wholeheartedly. However, I will not recount those experiences in detail here, as they would only repeat the sentiments I have expressed previously. Suffice to say, I found great fulfillment in using my story to inspire others facing similar challenges. Instead, I will simply express my deep gratitude for the opportunity to share my journey. It has been a humbling and empowering experience to reflect on how far I have come, both as an individual and as a professional. As I look ahead to the future, I feel a renewed sense of purpose and determination. My goal remains the same, to continue empowering others and spreading a message of resilience, perseverance, and self-acceptance. I am thankful for the support system that has allowed me to grow and develop these skills, and I am eager to pay that support forward. I hope my experiences can serve as a reminder that no matter how challenging life may seem, there is always the potential for growth, healing, and positive transformation. While the path ahead may bring new challenges, I am equipped with the tools and resilience to face them head on. With ongoing dedication and perseverance, the possibilities for personal and collective growth are limitless. So, so I will continue to embrace this journey of learning, empowerment, and mentorship inspired by the potential for positive impact that lies ahead.